Now, we move on to section 5, which is using autoencoders to efficiently represent data. In this, first of all, we'll understand encoder and decoders for efficient data representation. That is going to be the crux of understanding autoencoders. And then we are going to apply our understanding on three application guys. The first one is going to be TensorFlow coding using linear autoencoders to perform PCA on a 4D dataset. And then we are going to use stacked autoencoders for representation on the MNIST dataset using TensorFlow. And the third one is going to be building up a deep autoencoder with TensorFlow to reduce the latent space for LFW face dataset, which is University of Massachusetts Amherst dataset. Now, we move on to encoder and decoders for efficient data representation. In this, you can see the autoencoders architecture. So, you must be wondering, what is an autoencoder? As the name suggests, autoencoder means autoencoding. In this, you have some encoding that you are going to use out of it. So, in this architecture, you can see there is an encoder that's going to encode the inputs that we are giving to this neural network. And then there are some outputs. And then you have a decoder that again decodes the output from this layer into this x1 dash, x2 dash and x3 dash. So this output has to be equal to this input. So that is the basic crux of autoencoders. The input has to be equal to the output and the mean middle hidden layer output this output of this encoder is the encoding that you are going to use so to make it more clear you need to understand what is the purpose it solves now that output of that encoder layer that encoding is used for dimensionality reduction so that is layer having lesser dimensions that is if it was a four dimensional data set that encoding layer can have two dimensions data set so, you can solve another purpose which is randomly generating the new data set. Just play around with your hidden layer and by increasing the number of neurons or decreasing the number of neurons and you can have new data set. And now we move on to understanding the applications of autoencoders. Yes. So, it is used for reducing the latent space. That exactly means that uh, if you have a huge data set and you can use some fewer information out of that data set which has just the crux of that uh, information and you can train your model using that and then you can use it for generating higher resolution images now these can be done by increasing the number of neurons then your number of inputs and just playing around with your hidden layer which is the encoding layer and you can have high resolution images and then you can even use it for text corpus reduction when you have a 1D convolution in terms of just passing in the text corpus and then the encoding layer of the autoencoder can give you that corpus which contains just important information of the text corpus. So yeah, 